To test the flexion and extension component of the atlas, we're going to utilize a little bit of the method that Gonstead uses. To this end, I'm going to have your patient, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at flexion and extension, left and right lateral bending, and then left and right rotation. To this end, if I could, patient, I could just have a stand up if I could, sir. Standing to my patient's side, and I'll turn you towards this way. Standing to my patient's side, I'm going to have the patient do me a favor, I'm going to have you close your eyes. With your eyes closed, I want you to nod your head back and forth a few times. When you're comfortable keeping your eyes closed, I want you to assume what you consider to be a natural stance. To see the relative position of the atlas, we're going to utilize his nose. If this room was full of water, his nose would be above the water line. In other words, you could kind of say his nose looks a little bit more superior than normal, a little bit more cockier than normal. And what that suggests is, it tends to correlate with radiographs, that the atlas, the reference point being its anterior tubercle, the atlas is normally inclined at about a 12 to 14 degree. Because his nose is more superior to what's considered to be the water line, it implies that his atlas is actually posteriorly rotated. In other words, it's stuck in extension. The atlas has gone superior. So in essence, we can say that in the Gonstead listing system, his atlas A is superior S, or he's stuck in extension. To convert to a motion model, you'd say, well, if he's stuck in extension, he, must, he wouldn't be able to probably do the opposite movement or flex. This would be a flexion restriction. If his nose was level, that's considered to be a neutral atlas. If his nose is inferior to the waterline, you could say that his atlas is stuck in flexion. The anterior tubercle is more inferior than it should be, or what's known as an AI, as the first of the two level listing systems. To convert this to, to motion, if his atlas is stuck in flexion, chances are it would resist going into extension or an extension restriction. So that would be the first thing we're going to do. We're going to look at the flexion and extension by manually having the patient close their eyes, nod their head a number of times, keeping their eyes closed, assume a natural posture for themselves, then observing the nose as to its position relative to what we'll call the water table water line. If it's above, the atlas is superior. If it's on, it's neutral. If it's below, the atlas has gone inferior or on. The second thing we would look at is lateral bending. Do me a favor, sir, can I have you sit? For lateral bending, we're going to look at two things as we always do, joint plane and play. Our segmental contact point for the atlas for lateral bending is going to be the lateral aspect of the TVP. I can locate the lateral aspect of the TVP of atlas by coming up under the earlobe. I feel the inferior pole of the mastoid, it'll feel like a tooth, and I slide immediately inferior to this. Right. For joint play, what we're going to feel for, with my hand against the lateral, the lateral aspect of the atlas, is I laterally bend him, in this case I'm going to laterally bend him to the right. I should feel that space closed down, in other words, his lateral bending, the space, that inner, that inner transverse space should close down. That would mean joint play is present. To assess end feel, I bring the joint to pretension. Once again, in the cervical spine, my hand has to become a good fulcrum. And then from here, I'm going to spring from lateral to medial, in this case from right to left, to feel the resiliency or lack of resiliency of that atlas. I'm going to hold off what I feel until I feel the other side because there's not that much give. I expect a little bit more give. To assess left lateral bending, I could change my hand contacts. I could walk to the other side. Or two, I can just utilize my thumb, slide off the inferior aspect of the mastoid now here on his left side, laterally bend his head to the left, feeling for joint play. And to spring for end feel, now I'm going to spring from left to right to feel the resiliency or lack of resiliency as I further this movement of lateral bending. An alternative method, 
I can keep the head neutral, and I can assess translation of the atlas from right to left and left to right. In this method, being that I'm short and he's as tall as me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stabilize the top of his head with one hand. My other hand is going to come just inferior to the mastoid on one side on the lateral aspect of the TVP, in this case on the left. My middle finger is going to do the same thing on the right. I'm going to slide just immediately inferior to his mastoid, contacting the right TVP. In essence, I've trapped the atlas in my hand. Now stabilizing his head, I'm going to translate it back and forth to feel the resiliency or lack of resiliency in both movements. While I feel relative little give in either movement, there's a definitive lack of gliding from right to left in his relative to left to right. So he has what they call a left glide restriction, which is also known as a right lateral bending restriction of the atlas. He doesn't translate well from right to left. The final thing we're going to do is look at rotation. For rotation, my segmental contact point for the atlas is going to be the posterior TVP. To find the posterior TVP, I can find the lateral aspect of the TVP of the atlas and then just slide around posteriorly. You'll know you're in the right place because you're going to find this little space just behind the mastoid, just under the occiput, just lateral to the upper trap. It almost feels like a little hollow. It's slightly wider than the articular processes, but that is the atlas. To this end, I'm going to take the same hand that we use for a general scan and I'm going to contact the posterior aspect of the TBP of the atlas, in this case on the right side. I'm going to assess left rotation. To assess left rotation, I'm going to rotate the patient's head to the left, or to the, motion, the intended motion, but I'm going to contact the right TBP. I'm going to assess joint play and end play. Joint play is a little bit harder to feel using this method because we don't have the spinous processes. What it's going to feel like is the following. If my index finger represents the posterior TVP of the atlas, and my middle finger the articular pillar of the axis below, and my hand contact is going to be on that superior segment. As I rotate his head to pretension, if he has joint play, the atlas should step forward of the axis below, and my hand will be able to feel the translation of the atlas relative to the floor. In other words, it'll feel as if the joint lays down a little bit or one bone slides forward to the other. If you feel that, joint play is present. If you don't, if the two feels they move like a door, joint play is absence. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at joint play and then end feel in left rotation of his atlas. Now I do feel the atlas step forward of the axis below, so joint play is present. To assess end feel, I'm going to bring this joint to pretension. What will it feel like? As you rotate his head to the left, the TVP on the right is going to run from you. You're going to stay with it. It'll swing freely until we begin to take the slack out of the joint, and then you're going to feel a back pressure come into it. That's pretension. So I'm first going to bring the joint to pretension. Once I have him in pretension, my indifferent hand is going to stabilize his head. And now I'm going to spring P to A through that TVP, feeling the resiliency or lack of resiliency in left rotation of that atlas. I felt better. He's not very resilient. Although he has a degree of joint play, he's not really resilient in end feel. I'm not going to look at right rotation. It's funny how joint play is not, there's a little but not much. And end feel, for the most part, he feels a good restriction. He feels like wood. So he's got problems of his atlas on both sides, both right and left sides. So in this case, in the full evaluation of the atlas, we're going to look at flexion extension by having the patient nod back and forth. We're going to look at lateral bending, both to the right and left. 
And we're also going to look at rotation to the right and also to the left. And that would be a full evaluation of the atlas in a seated position. <clears throat> so 